If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Please also consider supporting us on Patreon. When making an instructional video, how do you decide what shots, B-roll and insert shots, uh, you need to add or you need to leave out and when uh, in your edit? Let's make an instructional video about making instructional videos. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we give you the inside tips you need to make great video. Right now, I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm conveying information on camera, and that's fine. There are YouTube channels that do that. I mean, that's what a podcast is, it's talking. It just means that as the viewer, you have to visualize at times what it is I'm talking about. Why not use this powerful visual medium to do that for you with B-roll insert shots and graphics and other visual images to help support the point you're making, to help the viewer get it. But when is it a good time to add these visual elements, B-roll, graphics, inserts, stills, right? These images that help support your point. Well, first let's define what B-roll is. Well, it's not A-roll. For that matter, what is A-roll? It's not an A-hole, that's for sure. <laughs> A-roll isn't a term we regularly use. It denotes footage from your main camera, in our case, your camera shooting you. For, we just call that on-camera footage. Back in the early days of film and TV, a lot of events and interviews and, and news footage and whatnot were captured uh, with 16 millimeter cameras. They were lighter, the film stock was obviously cheaper. It also meant that if they were recording sound at the same time, a lot of times they were recording it in camera uh, onto the film. It was recorded optically, on an optical track. So the problem with that is it meant that when they wanted to, uh, if they wanted to splice in B-roll to cut away from the person that's being interviewed, they couldn't because they would be cutting not only that person's footage, but the optical track, the audio as well. They weren't separate. So what they would do is they would row two tracks at the same time. 16 millimeter A-roll, the interview, 16 millimeter B-roll, black leader, where they would cut in, or, or that is splice in there, whatever the B-roll is that they wanted to cut to. So the technical director would be watching, and when that B-roll footage popped up, they would just switch over to the B-roll, like switching from A to B camera on a video shoot. So basically it was an analog version of having multiple tracks like we're so used to in non-linear editing today because kids today don't know what it was like back then, how hard it was. Everything was, you could touch it and you, it would give you cuts and glue and it was hard. So the term A-roll has gone away, B-roll has stuck. Now, so B-roll has become this catch-all phrase uh, for footage that is inserted to uh, support the narration, in our case, the on-camera narration. And since stills and graphics perform the same job, right? Footage or visuals, that is, that support um, your narration, uh, we kind of lump them all together. We can break B-roll into two types, specific and broad. Specific is showing the object the part, the step that you're talking about, and maybe the effect that it has. How to chop the carrot in a specific way. An insert shot of the part you're talking about on the camera. A gel you're gonna put in front of a light and the effect it has. The menu in Premiere Pro and what it does. It's clear cut. It illustrates specifically what you're talking about. So when and how often is it needed? Do you need to show every single step, like washing and peeling the carrots before you cut them? Well, keep this in mind. For this video, we're talking about adding visuals that complement the on-camera narration you're giving. You could just narrate it without you being on camera. That's all B-roll then. It's a lot harder to do. And you could do it and that's fine. You could use a lot of what I'm gonna talk about in this video. But let's start here, it's a little bit easier. So, you start with your on-camera narration, 
and you think about, okay, well, what visuals are needed to help the viewer see and understand your point at that specific point in the dialogue. If you're discussing a specific way to cut carrots, you probably don't need to show the peeling of it because they're coming there to see how to cut it in a specific way. Uh, the, the peeling is implied. The carrots are already peeled as you're sitting there chopping them. But if you're making a video for an audience who's never, who's new to cook cooking, like kids maybe, you might need to show all the steps. You might need to show cleaning and peeling the carrots before you cut them. So it really depends on your audience, who they are and what they need given where, given where they are in their knowledge about your subject. What do they need to understand the instructions you're giving verbally? Adding just enough visuals to complement them and make them clear. Broad B-roll is, well, less tangible. You're on camera discussing an idea, conveying a concept using words that your viewer then has to visualize, unless you illustrate it for them. Like that people need food like carrots in order to have the energy to live, walk, work, be healthy. We don't have to show people eating and then being active, but it helps illustrate the concept. It also helps keep the viewer engaged and entertained while conveying context and, as well, your branding. How you uh, differentiate your videos from everyone else. These choices of shots can convey your perspective and an, your aesthetic. Slick and beautiful, rough and natural, whatever it is that your audience can relate to that speaks to them. So how do you figure out which B-roll you need and, and don't? I find it's helpful initially to ask myself these questions as I'm writing and editing the script. I start by writing my on-camera dialogue, and if uh, an image pops to mind, something I want to show, I'll jot it down in parentheses so that I know what it is for later. After I'm happy with the dialogue, I'll put it into an AV script format. I'll put my on-camera dialogue in the left column, and any visuals that will go along and complement that dialogue in the right column. So this is when I'll take anything that I may have written in parentheses, and I'll put them in that right column. And I try to make each row um, a paragraph or an, a specific idea and concept. Sometimes it might just be one sentence. Now notice when I said AV script, audiovisual was written on the screen. Now when I was writing the script, as I typed AV script, because I know what that is, a, a, a visual popped in my mind, an image of audiovisual on the screen. Now if I didn't mark that down uh, at some point and I forgot to, to, to put that into the edit, it would be confusing to the viewer. So what you want to do as you write and edit and reread your script is be mindful of your mind's eye, of the images that pop up in, in your mind that you're associating, maybe without even knowing it, with your instructions, with that dialogue. Like when I'm describing how healthy carrots are, there's a picture that pops up in my mind of the food pyramid. And, so I realize I'll find that graphic and I'll point to where carrots are on that chart. It's visual evidence that carrots are healthy and it helps convey the concept of healthy food. Now, it's okay if you don't know all of the B-roll uh, when you write the script. I rarely do. A lot of times I'm sitting there editing and then I'm running into another room to shoot B-roll because that's where I'll realize, you know what, at this point, it really would help to convey this point. It might even be after that when Manu is uh, cleaning up my edit and, and finishing it up, where he's like, I don't, I'm confused here. And we both realize, oh shoot, you know, this would make sense to add some additional B-roll here. It's only a problem when getting that B-roll is site specific or, you know, you only you can only shoot uh, that one time at an event, or you only have access to that location or person or 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 object 
uh, at a specific time. You know, you're going and shooting uh, something in a museum or whatnot. Then you really do have to be prepared and get a lot of extra footage. And I'll talk about that in a follow-up video on how to actually shoot B-roll. That's going to be a good one. I talk about adding B-roll in the edit, and that's also a good time to look at, did you leave something out that will confuse the viewer? Are you leaving them with an unanswered question that will stop them from moving forward? You know, it's a video. They're not able to raise their hand and go, excuse me, I'm confused about that part. You, you, how did you do this? We found it's important to get feedback on the script if you can. We, Manu and I, do that with each other, uh, but particularly to have people view the first edit to help uncover these issues. People don't know what you know, and it's easy to uh, leave out a step or gloss over something because to us it's trivial or, or obvious. It's almost like muscle memory. We just do this, we just do that. Um, and we don't realize we're, we've just blown past the viewer. We see this in videos, and you probably have as well, particularly on software and editing, where all of a sudden the, the person giving the instruction is working in an obscure section of the software, but they forgot to tell you how they got there. <laughs> um, Manu is really good about making sure he shows you, like for instance, the little carrot up in the top left to display the audio effects and insert panel section. It's really easy to forget that and all of a sudden you're like, how the hell did, where did that thing come from? And that carrot is crazy small. Notice how I, I kept the theme of carrots going like that. Here's some more slow-mo of carrots. It's nice, nice B-roll. Nothing like slow-mo carrots bouncing on a, on a cutting board there. Just, it just says health. It's just, it's so healthy and natural. So that's part one on adding B-roll to your videos. Uh, in part two, I'm gonna talk about the tips and tricks, the mechanics of actually shooting B-roll. You're really gonna like this one. Uh, uh, we've learned some good stuff over the years, and we're gonna tell you all about it in an instructional video. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out pullmyfocus.tv for our companion articles that go along with our videos and we have other deals and fun stuff like that there as well. Thanks for watching and make great videos.